Maayong buntag mga kaigsoonan. Happy Lord's Day to everyone. And it's a great day to serve the Lord and to worship the Lord on this beautiful and wonderful day. But before that mga kaigsoon, akong hangyo ang tanan nga mukuha sila mga tagsa-tagsa ka mga Biblia. And open our Bibles to Psalm 18. Psalm chapter 18. And let's read verses 1, 2, 3. Ahong gihang yung nga mamarugta mga igsoon kung naamo sa inyong mga tagsatag sa kapanimalay. And let's give respect to the Lord and to the Word of God. Uh, let's open our Bibles to Psalms 18 verses 1 to 3. Atong basahon mga igsoon, nagdungan. I love you, Lord. You are my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my Savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me, and my place of safety. I called on the Lord who is worthy of praise, and he saved me from my enemies. So this is a psalm of David, mga kaigsuunan. Mauni ang salmo nga iyang gi. Um, he sang unto the Lord when the Lord delivered him from all his enemies. No appeal si Saul. And we know that the life of David, diligyod sa yun mga kaigsuunan kay. He was crowned king. But sa yung, sa pagcrown niya nga king si si David, daghan kay siya mga, before pa siya dyan nga kanang, kanang, naagi pa siya o daghan kay nga mga battles and struggles because enemies were chasing him, no, including his sons, and Saul and so and Saul was um, chasing him with kanang gusto siya patyon kay tungod nagselo si Saul nga nga siya ang nahimo nga hari but kani nga salmo mga kaigsuonan kung antong nakitan David nak si David nakailag yut siya sa iyang Ginoo kung makabantay ta sa mga salmo nga David kanang sa iyang kasing-kasing sa iyang pagpangamuyo sa Ginoo nakaila nailhan gud niya kung kinsa ang Ginoo no gikan sa iyang mga uh, experience in the in in his battle sa pag fight against his enemies he always he always call upon the name of the lord no mo nang niingon siya diri nga i love you lord first niingon siya you are my strength god is his strength second niingon siya the lord is my rock my fortress and my savior so daghan kay tagmakita kung unsa ang ginoo sa kinabuhi ni david he is uh, the lord is his strength the lord is his rock, my fortress, my savior. God is my rock in whom I find protection. And he is my shield, the power that saves me and my place of safety. And then sa verse 3, I called on the Lord who is worthy of praise and he saved me from my enemies. So, sa tanan ng iyang mga na-experience mga kaigsuunan, nailhan niya ang ginuo kay nga naman, he is named a man after God's own heart. No, every time nga na ay mahitabo sa iyong kinabuhi, dili good niya makalimtan mga kaigsuon nga mo, tawag sa iyang ginuo nga nailhan. And atong nakitaan mga kaigsuunan sa verses nga atong ibasa nga, grabe ang iyang pagkaila sa ginuo. So, sama sa maigsuon sa atong mga kinabuhi, Unsa man, kinsa man nga ginuo ang atong nailhan. No, labi na nga moabot ang panahon sa atong mga kinabuhi, sa mga pagsulay. How we respond sa maong nga situation mga igsoon determines kung kinsa ang ginuo nga atong nailhan. No? Kung unsa siya kadako sa atong kinabuhi. Hinaot mga igsoon nga kita sama ni David. No, nga. Sa tanan nga ayang naagian apa nakita niya ang ang kanindot sa ginoo, ang kagamhanan sa ginoo, kung kinsa ang ginoo sa iyang kinabuhi. So the God that we serve is, um, He is beyond, He is greater than we can imagine, mga egsoon. And we know nga, sa atong nakitaan karon, we only see the present nga nahitabo sa atong kinabuhi, but the Lord knows no, the future ahead, kung unsay mahitabo, ugma. And the Lord, wala na siya nagplano ug kanang something, Nga dili sa atong kaayuhan, but it is always for the good sa atong mga kinabuhi. He pleased to do good no, sa iyong mga katawahan. So, He's worthy of our praises this morning. So, I encourage you, I invite you to worship this morning. And let's just enjoy the presence of the Lord while sa atong pagsimba karun nga. 
maong adlaw, mga kidson. Indeed, it is a great day to serve the Lord. Let's come before the Lord. Hallelujah, O God. Lord, we praise you. You are the God, Lord of David. You are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, O Lord. You are unchangeable, O God. And Lord, you are the God who reigns throughout eternity, O Lord. You are the God, Lord, na gamhanan, Lord, sa mga kinabuhi, ginoo, and Ikaw ang ginoo nga nagkuput sa matag kinabuhi. And even, Lord, O God, na even before the foundation of the earth, O Lord, O God, all of these things, O God, Lord, imuna na yung planuhan, ginoong Diyos, O Lord. Lord, who has known your mind, O God? No one, O God, because you are God, O Lord. And Father, we, we thank you for this wonderful morning, O God, that we can serve you, we can worship you, we can call upon your name, O Lord. We can call upon the name of Jesus, O God. We just pray, Lord God, this, this morning, Lord God, that you will empower us, O Lord, O God, with your Holy Spirit, Lord God, that we may be able, O God, Lord, to worship you, O God, with all of our hearts and our minds and our soul and our strength, O God. You are the God who alone is worthy of all our praises. And we worship you. We worship you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you, O God. Nothing will ever compare with you, O Lord. Hallelujah, O God. Praise your name.
Wonderful your love, O God, Lord, towards us, O God, that you have lavished on us, O Lord, O God. We thank you, O Lord, O God. We love you because you have first loved us, O Lord, O God. You sought us, O God, Lord, while we were lost, O God. You died for us, O Jesus. And we praise your holy name. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, O Lord. Ang tanang mga katawhan ginoong Dios magdaig og magsimba kaning mo Ginoo. Ang tanan Lord muyukbo Lord. Kay ikaw ang hari sa tanang hari Ginoo sa tanang Ginoo Ginoong Jesus. And we worship your name Lord. As we continue to worship you O God. May we please you O God Lord. May our hearts rejoice, O oh God, before you, Lord. You are the God, Lord, that we serve, who is powerful, who is mighty. Hallelujah, O oh God. Kami tanan magsimba diha kami Kiran man kapatagan simbahan ka sa tanang ilalang tanang tribo magadaig 
liha kanimo ang tanang dila magasugit na ikaw si Jesus ang tanang tuhod magkaluhod sa imong kahalangon o Diyos sa katribuhan o kanasuran simbahon ka sa walay katapusan Kami talan mag-isipa diha kami mo O Diyos Kami talan mag
Kapuasan ginoong Dios O God. Walay lain Dios O Lord O God nga mong ituboy sa kaytasan kung dili ikaw lamang O Dios O God Lord. We boast in you alone O God for you are the God throughout the ages O Lord. You reign throughout eternity O Lord. You are our eternal God O Lord. And we worship your name O God. Ruler of everything O Lord. Everything that has breath will praise your holy name, O oh God. And Lord, we will shout your praises, O oh Jesus, O oh God. Hallelujah, Lord, for you alone deserve all our worship. And we worship you, Lord. We worship you, O oh God. Lord, you are sovereign, O oh God. You are sovereign, O oh Lord. You are in full control of everything, O oh Lord, O oh God. O oh Lord, O oh God, we thank you, O oh Lord, that it is not us who is only to you, but you are holding on to us, O oh Lord, O oh God. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the salvation, Lord. Thank you for your mercy and your grace, O oh God. For to you, Lord God, all oh, the glory, the praises, and honor, O oh Lord. We worship you. We thank you, Lord God, for your presence. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Happy Lord's Day to all. Welcome to our Sunday service from Living Word South Morning Service. And before we go to our study, we have some announcement for our ministry schedules. Our youth fellowship is temporarily suspended because of the coronavirus. And our Bible study in Asan, also temporarily suspended. Our Talisay Police Station devotional, also temporarily suspended. Our Raphael Home Subdivision, we are also on live streaming every Thursday night, uh, 8 p.m. In Tersisori, every Friday. 9.30 a.m. still going on. Equipping class, temporarily suspended. Our midweek devotions, every Wednesday, 8 a.m. So praise God for those who are watching this morning. Happy Lord's Day to all. And our topic for today, we will be studying in chapter 16 of the first Corinthians and that is our last topic for the whole book of first Corinthians and we praise God that we were able to finish the whole chapter this is the last one the chapter 16 and before we go can we all open our Bible and we will read from verse 1 of 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 up to verse 24. Now concerning the collections for the saints, as I directed the churches of Galatia, so you also are to do. On the first day of every week, each of you, to put something aside and store it up as he may prosper, so that there will be no collecting when I come. When I arrive, I will send those whom you are credited by letters to carry your gift to Jerusalem. If it seems advisable that I should go also, they will accompany me. I will visit you after passing through Macedonia, for I intend to pass through Macedonia. And perhaps I will stay with you, or even spend with winter, so that you may help me on my journey wherever I go. For I do not want to see you now just in passing. I hope I spend some time with you if the Lord permits. 
But I will stay in Ephesus until Pentecost. For a wide door for effective works has opened to me. And there are many adversaries. When Timothy comes, see that you put him at ease among you. For he is doing the work of the Lord as I am. So let no one despise him. Help him on his way in peace, that he may return to me, for I am expecting him with brothers. Verse 12. Now concerning our brothers Apollos, I strongly urge him to visit you with others' brothers, but it was not at all his will to come now. He will come when he has opportunity. Be watchful, stand firm in faith, act like men, be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. Verse 15, Now I urge you, brothers, you know that the household of Stephanas were the first convert in Atseya, and that they had devoted themselves to the service of the saints. Be subject to such as this, to the very pill workers and laborers. I rejoice at the coming of Stephanas and Fortunatos and Achaeacos, because they have made up for your absence, for they refresh my spirit as well as yours. Give recognition to such people. Verse 19. The churches of Asia send you greetings. Akela and Presca, together with the church in their house, send your hearty greetings in the Lord. And all the brothers send you greetings. Greet one another with a holy kiss. I, Paul, wrote these greetings with my own hands. If anyone has no love for the Lord, let him be a curse. Our Lord, come. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you. My love be with you all. In Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's all pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful morning, O oh God. We thank you that in spite of what happened this time, you remain faithful unto us. And Father, as we continue to ponder your word, open our heart and mind. Holy Spirit, help us for the whole counsel of your word as we study today. And whatever accomplishment of God, unsa manggani ang among makabot karon. We are very careful in giving you back. All the glories are yours alone, O God. In the name of Jesus, we give you thanks and praise. Amen and amen. Now, Paul wrote this letter while he was working with Timothy in Ephesus. We have a brief outline from verse 1 to verse 4. It talks about the collections for the believers in Jerusalem. In verse 5 to verse 9, it is tentative trouble schedule of Paul. In verse 10 to verse 12, it talks about other Christian workers. And in verse 13 to verse 18, it's Paul's final Warning. And in verse 19 to verse 24, it's about Paul closing greetings to the Corinthians. Now, in verse 1 to verse 2, listen to this. Now about the collection for the Lord's people. Do what I told 
the Galatian churches do, on the first day of the week, each one should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, saving it up so that when I come, no collection will have to be made. Now, in other version, in King James Version, it says, Now concerning the collections for the sins. Now, in this verse, there are three things we need to answer from verse 1 to verse 2. What to give, when to give, and who will give. The first one, it says, Paul says, now concerning the collection. It is quite strange. If you still remember, we started in chapter 15. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we're talking about the resurrection. We're talking about the rapture. And we are talking about the reality of life. That one day, we will die. And then suddenly, chapter 16, it is totally different topic. It talks about collection of money. As if Paul takes a break and then come back from heaven to earth and he goes from resurrection to collection, from rapture to revenue. What's the connection? We, can, we might ask, what's the connection of those things? In chapter 15, we're talking about re resurrection and now we're talking about collection of money. In chapter 15, we're talking about the rapture of the church. And now we're, about, we're talking about revenue. Is there any connection in chapter 15 to chapter 16? Well, yes. It simply means that we are to be in fellowship with God, and that is our vertical relationship, and partnership with one another to our fellow believers in Christ, and that is what we call the horizontal relationship. Now, we need to understand that we have two dimensions of faith, the vertical and the horizontal. Right knowing about God will result to right living. But wrong knowing about God will result to wrong living. There is a link between our spiritual journey and our practical stewardship, and that is on our horizontal. What happened here is that Paul leads us from glory to giving. Now, the first question is, what to give? Go to verse 1. In verse 1 it says, now about the collection of Lord's people, do what I have told the Galatians churches do. Now, the first thing we need to understand is about collection for God's people. Paul is giving instruction to the church of Corinth. The same instruction he gave to the church in Galatia, in the area of giving, or helping to the church in Jerusalem. There is a what we call uniformity of instruction in different churches in the area of giving. Now, the question is, why were the Christians in Jerusalem poor? What's the reason? Nga nung naglisod mang yod ang mga katawan sa Jerusalem? Almost like, what happened now? Because if you read book of Acts chapter 11, verse 27 to verse 30, you will find out that the experience famine during that time. Na ang kapait sa ilang panahon 
And if you read book of Acts chapter 6, verse 1 to 6, you will find out that the church in Jerusalem, they supported the large number of widows. Dagang mga byuda, nga ilang gisuportahan. And another thing is that they fail to obey God. Because of failure to obey God. Remember, before the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, in book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, and this is what the Bible declares. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. Notice the word. You will receive power. Then how in the world that the Israelites lose their spiritual power. Why? Because of this obedience. Remember John chapter 1 verse 11? The Bible declares, He came to His own, but His own did not accept Him. They didn't accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And what happened to them? Remember last time we studied? That 70 AD, what happened to the Romans? They destroyed Jerusalem. Everything vanished. Why? Failure to obey God. The promise is that they will receive power, but they lost that spiritual power. Why? It is because of disobedience. Friends, it would be the same in our time. What happened to us now? It's so chaotic. Very chaotic. What happened to their time? God sent persecution and drove them out. Many has lost their jobs. And what happened to us now? A lot of people, we don't have jobs. Lockdown. Totally. God is just teaching us, my dear friends, that indeed, Without Jesus Christ in this life, we are nothing. Remember John chapter 15? Jesus says in verse 5, Apart from me, you can do nothing. So as Christians, we need to follow the pattern of the early church of what we call practical stewardship, which means faith in action. We need to help our fellow believers in Christ the same thing as they did during the early church. And that's why we support our fellow believers. We distribute goods. And that is showing the love of God to each and every one. Now look at verse 2. When do we give? It says, On the first day of the week, each one of you is to put aside and save as he may prosper, so that no collection be made when I come. So when to give? The Bible declares on the first day of the week. Now, the question is, what is the first day of the week? Now, the first thing we need to understand, we are using what we call Gregorian calendar. Now, Gregorian calendar, it counts from midnight to midnight. And now we need to understand that we are talking about Bible. We are talking about Jewish people. And for the Jewish calendar, what they did, they count the day from sundown to sundown. Now, the Sabbath will start on the Friday afternoon, and it will end up to Saturday afternoon. That is the Sabbath day. Now, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible declares, the day after the Sabbath, which means Sunday. And we called it 
Resurrection Day or the Lord's Day. So the first day after the Sabbath is what we call Sunday. And that's the reason why we fellowship on the first day of the week, which is Sunday. And then the Bible declares we need to give on the first day of the week. Friends and my dear brethren, giving is a part of worship. And that is the instruction of the Bible. When do we give? The Bible declares on the first day of the week. It's one of us. You don't really worship until you practice stewardship. Corinthians need to give when? Every first day of the week, which implies that giving is in what? It should be in a regular basis. Dili na siya hit and miss. Nga karon na next time wa. Notice, Paul did not or never designate an amount. He doesn't say you have to put this much and you put this much. Why? Why is it? Friends, if your heart, if you feel to lead, set aside 10%. For the Lord's work, so be it. Praise God. But we need to understand that grace is more higher than law. The Old Testament, according to the law, is what we call tithes or the tenth. But if you talk about grace, grace is more than. But if you feel to give 10%, praise the Lord for that. But Paul never mentioned and if you feel you give more than 10, well, praise God. Praise God for that. And the third question, who will give? Who will give? Go to verse 2 again. Each of you should sit aside as we prosper. In other words, in good months and a good year of your life, you and I, we are expected to become more generous. But of course, in lean times, like now, we are expected to adjust accordingly, according to what we have. Here's a note. The church of Macedonia is a poor church. They are not rich. While people in Corinth they are wealthy. But here's a question. Why is it that the believers in Macedonia is eager to support Paul in the work of spreading the gospel? Why is that? Listen to this verse. In 1 Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse, verse 1, it says, And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. Verse 2, listen to this. In the midst of every severe trial, their overflowing joy and extreme poverty world up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able, and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own. They urgently pleaded with us for what? For the privilege of sharing in the service to the Lord. Friends, sharing or giving is a privilege. That is the heart of Macedonian. They are poor, but they are generous in terms of God's work. Listen to verse 5. And they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves, first of all, to the Lord, and then by the will of God also for us. What is the secret in life? Friends, in verse 5, it says, 
They give first themselves to the Lord. So it is yourself first. Give it to the Lord. And then your giving will follow. Remember this. You cannot give the things that you don't have. If Jesus Christ is not within your heart, never you will help or never you will give for God's work. Why? Because it is our nature as a human being, we are all greedy. Our mindset is only for, for me. Only for myself. Me, myself, and I. That is our mindset. Why is it that the Macedonian Christian were so eager to help in Paul's ministry in spite of being poor? Why? Because the Bible declares, the first give themselves to the Lord. That is the key. And listen to the letter of Paul to the Romans. In book of Romans chapter 15, verse 26, this is what the Bible says. For Macedonia and Achaia have been pleased to make a contribution for the poor among the saints in Jerusalem. So they are eager, they are open. Their heart is willing to support. Just like now, my dear brethren. What happened to us? There's no work. And people are just what? They're just waiting for support from the government. And as a church, we can help. Not just to sit down. Not just to pray. Make it faith in action. Practical ministry. Just what happened to Macedonia? Why? Because first, they give their life to the Lord. And that is the key. Now let's go to verse 3 and verse 4. When I arrive, I will give letters of introduction to the men you approve and send them your gift to Jerusalem. If it seems advisable for me to go also, they will accompany me. Now what happened to Paul? Paul asked them to send representatives to carry gift to Jerusalem church to ensure the arrival of gift. You know what happened in our time now? The government are giving supports, but the problem is it's not sure if it will arrive. Just like the time of Paul, he wants somebody to represent to the church of Jerusalem to make sure nga ang maong hinabang muabot dito. Lot of promises being made. Support. I don't know it. You receive the support. And that's the reason why during the time of Paul, naginahanglan sila o representative, Aaron Masigoro. Now the question is, what is the motive of giving? Even in a difficult time, even in a difficult time, ang mga tao nagpadayong paghihapon o politicking. They're still thinking about politics. But listen to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 5. So I thought it is necessary to urge the brother to visit you in advance and finish the arrangement for the generous gift you had promised. Then it will be ready as what? Generous gift, not as grudgingly given. So what is the motive of giving? It should be what? Open heart, not grudgingly. Kay ugmuhatag lang ka, nga bugat ang imong kasing-kasing, ayaw na lang. Why? It become curse. Mahimo pa ng tunglo. 
So, muhatag ka, you will help. For God's work, it should be from your heart. Amen? Now, let's go. Let's go on verse 5 to verse 9. And this is what the Bible declares. Now I will come to you when I pass through Macedonia. For I am passing through Macedonia, and it may be that I will remain or spend the winter with you, that you may send me on my journey wherever I go. For I do not wish to see you now on the way, but I hope to stay a while with you if the Lord permits. Listen to this. If the Lord permits. But I will tarry in Ephesus until Pentecost, for a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. Now listen to this. Look at verse 7. The praise, if the Lord permits. Meaning, Paul leaves all his plan up to the will of the Lord. He planned to go through the region of Macedonia. And after that, he will visit Corinth. Now, just let me give you an idea. How far this place is. From Ephesus, Ephesus is part of Turkey. And Macedonia is part of Greece. And from Ephesus to Greece to Macedonia, that is 1,090 kilometers. Imagine 1,090 kilometers. And during their time, they don't have airplanes. No. Most of the time, they have to walk. And imagine Manila to Cebu is around 830 kilometers. Now, if you have to walk from, from Manila to Cebu, I don't know how many days. And imagine episodes to Macedonia, 1,090 kilometers. That is not an easy thing. And that is the plan of Paul, if the Lord will permit. So just like our life, do not be sure what happened tomorrow. Always use the word, if the Lord permits. Why? Because that is what Proverbs 19 verse 21. The Bible declares, Many are planned in man's heart, but it is the will of God that will prevail. Now go to verse 8. Bible, the Bible declares, I will stay in Ephesus. Meaning, for time being, I will stay in Ephesus. Why? Because Paul says in verse 9, for a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. Now, look at this word. For a great and effective door has opened to me, but listen to this, and there are many persecution or adversaries. Now, for us, sa mga bago, a new generation ng mga, ng mga workers. When we face persecution in ministry, it's time to go. Biyaan dayo na. Kapoy ning buluhaton, daggang mo persecute na to. Let's go! But not for Paul. Para kang Pablo mga Ezon, a lot of persecution, a lot of opportunities. Listen, for a great and effective door has opened to me and there are so many persecution. So persecution is what? Is a door of opportunity for God's work. Amen? Now look at verse 10 to verse 11. This is what the Bible says. Now if Timothy comes... See that he is with you without the cause to be afraid. For he is doing the Lord's work. As I am also. Verse 11. So let no one despise him, but send him on his way in peace. So that he may come to me, for I expect him with the brethren. 
Now, why is it that Timothy have a strong endorsement from Paul to the church of Corinth? Why is that? Well, we will check who Timothy is. Philippians chapter 2 verse 20. The Bible says, For I have no one like him who will be what? Genuinely concerned for your welfare. Timothy is a faithful worker of the Lord. And that's the reason why Paul had a strong endorsement to the church of Corinth. Be sure that you have to accommodate Timothy. Why? Because he is a faithful worker of the Lord. And one time, Paul wrote a letter to Timothy. He encouraged Timothy. Paul encouraged him to continue in serving the Lord faithfully. 1 Timothy chapter 4, it says, verse 12. Let no one despise you for your youth, but seek the believers an, an, as an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Look at this. Do not tell yourself that I am youth. Ugwala koy kapasidad to be a workers of the Lord. Friends, Timothy was being used by God mightily. If your heart is willing to be used by God, God can use you mightily for the expansion of His kingdom. Just same with the life of Timothy. Listen in the Old Testament, in the life of Jeremiah. Jeremiah also still very young. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 7. Thou says the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am youth, for you shall go to all of whom I send you. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. We are just an instrument to be used by God. It is God's business. Conversion of heart is the work of the Holy Spirit. That is not your business. And that's the reason why the Bible declares it's not by might, not by power, but only by the Spirit. Not by might. Our business is to share the gospel. Conversion of heart is the work of the Holy Spirit. For you shall go to all whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. That is the word from the Lord to Jeremiah. And remember, just like Jeremiah and Timothy, they are one of the best examples in scriptures that young people serve God. Or maybe you're thinking, maybe you're thinking, maybe God, God don't realize that I'm still young. No, my dear friends. God can use your life. Now go to verse 12. It says, But concerning Apollos, our brothers, I encourage him greatly to come to you with the brethren. And it was not at all his desire to come now, but he will come when he has opportunity. But what's the name of Apollos here? Who is Apollos? Who is Apollos? We need to check first the name Apollos. In book of Acts chapter 18 verse 24, the Bible says, A certain name Apollo, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man, Listen to this. An eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures came to Ephesus. So who is Apollos? Eloquent man. And that's the reason why if you want to know who is a good preacher, it is not Paul, it is Apollos. He's eloquent compared to Paul. 
Remember one time Paul shared the gospel. And then Eutychius fall down from the third story. You see? He's not a good talker. But Apollos, yes. He's a very eloquent man. Now, something we need to, to check during the writing of Apostle Paul in the first Corinthians. Remember the first Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4. The people in Corinthians, the heart of the people in Corinthians was divided. Somebody says, well, I'm for Paul and I'm Apollos. So they are so divided. Now in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 6, chapter 3, verse 6, Paul says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God was causing the good. Now, how in the world that Apollos was really the reason that Apollos doesn't want to return back to Corinth? Well, maybe Apollos was staying away to avoid unhealthy desires of his followers in that city that will cause division of the church. Why? Because they are being divided. Well, I, will be, I want to be with Paul. I want to be with Apollos. I want to be with Peter. And somebody says, well, I want to be in Christ. But friends, the heart of Paul and the heart of Apollos wanted the church to follow Christ alone. And that should be the concern of every pastor in the whole world to bring the people to Jesus Christ not to bring the people to myself praise God now verse 13 verse 14 it says once stand fast in the faith be brave be strong let all that you do be done in love. Five things. First, watch. Stand in the faith. Be brave. Be strong. And all should be done in love. Now the first word is watch. If you read the New Testament, the word watch was being used 22 times. Which literally means to awake and to be vigilant. Meaning, Paul warned the Corinthians church that they need to guard themselves from what? From spiritual laziness. Christians are to stay on guard spiritually. Especially on what happened in our time. Book of Matthew chapter 26 verse 41 this is what Jesus Christ says. Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. There are times you wanted to pray. But what happened? You just continue to sleep. Why? Because the Bible says the flesh is what? Weak. You need to feed this flesh with the word of God. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8. The Bible declares, Be so bear and be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Remember your enemies. Paul wrote a letter to the patient. He says, Remember, we are not fighting against flesh, but we are fighting against the principality of darkness. And the principality of darkness is what? It's like a roaring lion. Be careful. How? Bible says, watch and pray. The second thing is, is stand fast in the faith. Meaning, it's not enough to watch, but the church should also stand fast in the faith. God is not happy with hot and cold spiritual life. 
That is spiritual instability. As Christians, we need to stand only in one thing. Only in one thing, and that is the gospel. Never compromise the gospel. Do not water down the gospel. Do not sugarcoat the gospel. Gospel is gospel. Remember Romans chapter 1 verse 16? This is what Paul says. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for the salvation first to the Jew and to the Gentiles. Now, third thing. It says, be brief. Why is it Paul says, and he gave a command to the Corinthians, be brief. Why? Because the Corinthians were not acting like men, but like babes. Let me read you 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. Brethren, could not I speak to you as a spiritual man, but as men of flesh, as to what? Infants in Christ. You see? Bonsai in Christ. Still, they are still infants. Bible declares we need to grow in the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. The fourth thing is Paul encouraged them to be strong. Strong means in what we call strength or spiritual maturity. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. This is what the Bible says. Finally, my dear brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God and that is what we call His Word. The whole armor of God. Here's a question. How can we measure the level of child's maturity? Saan na ito pagkibaw na ang bata ning mature na siya? You know the answer is? By the toys he or she takes interest in. What if a 10 years old still playing with the rattle toys? Kaya mga duwaan sa pambata. What do you think? Something is very wrong. 10 years old, and then magduwa pa lang gyapon, anang pangbata nga gagmay. Something is what? Very wrong. Now, here's a question again. How can we measure the level of Christian maturity? Listen to book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 16. The Bible declares, By their fruit you will know them. It's not by their knowledge, but by their fruit, which means in your daily life, you can be easily identified if you are really true believers in Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 20. Here's what Paul says. Brethren, do not be children in understanding, however, be malice, in malice be babes, but in understanding be mature. Do not be children in understanding, but be mature. Meaning, we need to grow in the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. How? Saturate your life, your heart, with the Word of God. Spend time in reading and spend time in prayer. Now, verse 14. It says, Let all that you be done with love. Meaning, love for fellow Christian is the foundation of Christianity. Remember the basic, the, the basic of Christian life. The Lord Jesus Christ, this is the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Matthew chapter 22 verse 37. The first thing is what? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. It's all about love. Meaning, our love for our fellow Christian is the foundation 
of Christianity. First Peter chapter 4 verse 8. This is what the Bible says. Above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover the multitude of sins. Hallelujah. Now, let's go to verse 15 to verse 16. It says, I urge you, brethren, you know the household of Stephanus, that is the first fruit of Achaia, and that they have devoted themselves to the ministry of the saints, that you also submit to such and to everyone who works and labor with us. Now, who is Stephanus? Friends, Stephanus' family was, was the first family convert in the province of Achaia where Corinth was located. They are the first family who helped the church at Corinth. The Bible declares the first fruit. Remember, our Lord Jesus Christ is the first fruit of our resurrection. And the word first fruit was being used in this verse, meaning they are the first convert. In that area. And in verse 16 it says, You also submit to such to everyone who works and labors with us. Why? Because Corinthians church have a problem with submission to the authority. Why? They are wealthy. They are so prideful. And that's the reason why Paul says, you need to recognize the authority of the household of Stephanus. Submission to authority is essential for a healthy church. We need to submit to our authority. We submit to the government. Same thing with the church. Hebrew chapter 13 verse 7. Listen to the writer of Hebrews says, Remember those who ruled over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. Verse 17, Obey those who rule over you and be submissive. Why is it? For they watch out for your soul. As those who must give account, let them do so with joy and not with grief. For that would be unprofitable for you. So we need to submit to the authority. Now, go to verse 17 to verse 18. And it says, I'm glad about the coming of Stephanas, Fortunatos, and Achaeacos. For what was lacking in your part, they supplied. For they refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore, acknowledge such men. Now, it is Stephanas, Fortunatos, and Achaeacos. They are the one who had carried the letters to Paul. And in verse 18, Paul says, they are ref For they repress my spirit and yours. Therefore, acknowledge them. Which means all leaders need encouragement. I need encouragement. You need encouragement, especially this time. Even our mighty Apostle Paul needs to be encouraged. Remember the, the word being used by our Lord Jesus Christ in book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. Come to me, all of you who are tired and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The same word, refresh, being used by Paul. Come to Jesus, my dear friend. You will be encouraged. If you look to Jesus Christ, you will be encouraged. If you look to the world, especially now, you will be discouraged. So fix your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. We're almost there. Verse 19 to verse 20. The Bible declares, The church of Asia greet you. Achela and Priscilla greet you heartily in the Lord. With the church that is in their house, all brethren greet you, greet one another with a holy kiss. Now, who is Aquila and Priscilla? Aquila and Priscilla was a former Jew. 
who became a Christian through Paul. So they are being converted to Christianity. God used Apostle Paul for them to become Christian. And what happened? They moved to Corinth from Rome because of the persecution by Claudius. Claudius commanded all Jews to leave Rome according to book of Acts chapter 18 verse 2. And Paul stayed in their house for one year and a half. Acts chapter 18. And there's something we need to clarify here. It says, with the church that in their house. The church that is in their house, greet you. Now, we need to settle, what is the church? Because it, it is not possible that the church will meet in their house. If our mindset is church is the building, this could be possible. Why? Building is very big to get inside a house. It says, greet the church that is in their house. What is the church? Now, let me define using the Greek word ecclesia. The church in Greek is what we call ecclesia. And what is ecclesia? It is defined as assembly. A group of believers. Listen to what Paul wrote in book of Romans, chapter 16, verse 5. Greet the church that is in their house. Which means, Paul is not talking about church building. Paul is talking about the body of the believers. Therefore, church is not a building. Church is a body of the believers. Why? Because if our mindset is church is a building, how in the world that the church will go in the house? No, it is not possible. Church are the body of the believers who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The last verse, verse 21 to verse 24. This is what the Bible says. If anyone does not love Jesus Christ, let him be accursed. O Lord, come! The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. My love be with you. All in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, Paul gave a final strong warning to the church of Corinth. You know what he says? If anyone fail to show love for Christ, then this person is what? Should be our course. Why? Because they are not a true believers in Christ. Remember 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5? This is what the Bible declares. Examine your faith. It doesn't mean the whole people inside within the church are true Christian. No. It is only God who knows. Only God knows. Remember book of Matthew chapter 7? Verse 21? Up to verse 23? This is what the Bible says. Not all who call to me, Lord, 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 can enter the kingdom of God, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. And that, that's the reason why Paul says, there, this person revealing themselves to be a curse. Friends, be sure that in your life, you have a right relationship to God through Jesus Christ. Listen to what Paul says in his final word. Return, O Jesus, come, O Lord. You know that word in, in Aramaic, it says, Maranatha. Come, O Lord. People is, Paul is looking for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you looking for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ? Friends, I am excited that one day I will be with Him forever. This is what Apostle Paul says. To be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. 
The last word, Paul says, the love of Christ be with us all. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, God, for this wonderful morning, O Lord. We thank you even for your word. We thank you, O God, that every now and then, you reminded us that indeed, apart from you, we can do nothing. Lord, thank you even for this morning, Lord. If somebody here, O God, ugnay ani ang karuning kabuntagon nga dunay balatian ginoong Dios. Lord, it is you, ang imong pulong naging on, for we are naked in your sight. Imong nakitaan ang tanan. Gino akong pag-ampo, God, nga imong paghikapon ang iyong balatian, Lord. Gikan sa iyang ulo, hantod sing lapalapa. And Father, in Jesus' name, kung pag-ampo, Gino, that they will grow in knowing you more. Father, we just thank you. Salamat din kabuntagon. Takos kang pasidunggan, takos kang pasalamatan, o takos kang himayahan. Just thank you, and we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.